when you look at a mass spectrum, the most common source for your fragments is going to be through the alpha cleavage. But there are other pathways by which, other fragmentation pathways, by which we're going to generate fragments. And probably the most classic of all the other pathways is called the McLafferty Rearrangement. That's R-A-R for short. McLafferty Rearrangement. Um, this is a, a classic pathway, but it only occurs in specific cases. And that's if you have a carbonyl with a gamma CH. Okay, gamma, and there's the Greek symbol for gamma. So let's draw the minimal structure we can to draw, get a carbonyl with a gamma hydrogen. So here's our carbonyl. And we're going to draw it with three carbons. There's the alpha next to the carbonyl, then beta, then gamma, and there's a hydrogen. So this molecule, well, if we put it, this minimal structure, if we put it through a mass spectrometer, we're going to ionize it, strip off an electron, and where's that electron going to come from? Well, it's going to come from the highest energy electrons available. It's going to come from the carbonyl. And now we get this structure where um, it's going to undergo a fragmentation. I'm going to redraw the structure just to make it a little bit more clear how this happens. So what happens is this chain folds up a little differently than what I've shown, takes on a different conformation, so that the hydrogen on the, the gamma carbon is right in proximity of that radical. And now what happens is we're going to move a bunch of electrons. Again, we're going to use our fish hook arrows to move them, but we're going to make a new OH bond. Uh oh, not very clear. That of this elect this bond is going to break between the gamma uh, carbon and the hydrogen, and so we're going to break. Use those electrons also from the alpha beta uh, carbon carbon sigma bond, and we're going to make a new pi bond. And that second electron from the alpha beta sigma bond is going to end up on the alpha carbon. And so here we go. If we draw the outcome of that, we're going to have a new OH bond. We still have a lone pair. This is still positive. Our alpha carbon now has a radical. And what happened to our gamma and beta carbons? Well, they actually form a neutral molecule beta and gamma, and this is what we get. So what do we observe in the mass spectrometer? Well, this species, this is our radical cation. It has an MZ of 86, and this molecule, this fragment molecule, has a mass of a molecular weight of 28. Now, it, it's not a radical, it's not a cation. So since it's neutral, it's not going to be observed by the spectrometer. But that 28 is taken from our 86. And let's see, little math in your head. I think that's a 58. This fragment, which is both a radical and a cation, will be observed at an MZ value of 58. Okay, now alarms ought to go off because this is kind of weird. We started with an even mass parent ion, and what do we see as our fragment? We saw our observed fragment as an even mass. So this is alpha cleavages will, will go from even to give you odd fr fragment cations that you'll observe. So when you start seeing even mass peaks and your parent ion was even, something different is going on. And one of those weird different things is the McLafferty rearrangement. But the, the numbers will give you a clue that uh, something else is happening. So this is a really common fragmentation pathway. It forms a this, um, this radical cation fragment. looks a little weird, but it's actually very stable. There's a lot of resonance here. So it's actually a very favorable fragmentation. But the McLafferty is a classic. If you go anywhere past the introduction to mass spectrometry, you will encounter the McLafferty rearrangement because it's a classic. And we see a lot of carbonyl compounds, so we will see some McLafferty rearrangements.